What's up guys, Jesse here. So every year smartphone cameras get better and better. And every year we ask the question, how necessary are professional cinema level cameras? So that's why today we're gonna be comparing the iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is arguably the best smartphone camera for video that has come out this year to the Red Epic MX 5K, which when it came out in 2015 was one of the top of the line cinema cameras. And anybody who's kind of interested in tech probably knows about it at this point. Some small YouTuber, I think his name is like MKB, SD or something like that. Uh, he, he made it pretty famous among uh, everyone who watches tech YouTube videos. So in this comparison, we're gonna be capturing some clips, some B-roll and playing some sequences one after the other. Got the iPhone mounted up to the red, so they're gonna be capturing the exact same clips. And then I'm gonna play one sequence after the other and not tell you which camera was shot on. And then you guys in the comment section down below can let me know which one you think is which. And with that out of the way, let's get into this comparison and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so that was camera number one, and by the way, both of these are going to be more or less straight out of camera with minimal work done to them. Some clips I did have to go in and adjust the exposure a little bit, but that's it. So before we move on to camera number two, pause the video and let me know down in the comment section below which camera you thought camera one was. And once you're done with that, let's move on to camera number two. And that was camera number two. So now that you've seen both of these sequences back to back, do you still feel comfortable with the decision you made earlier? Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you what they are. So camera number one was the iPhone and camera number two was the red. Let me know how you guys did. And by the way, huge thank you to my friend Renee for letting us borrow his red for this little project. He's a filmmaker in my area and I'll just leave his Instagram handle somewhere around this area. He makes some seriously cool stuff and you guys should go check him out. So personally, I feel like after looking at the footage from both of these cameras, there's a a pretty significant difference between the red and the iPhone and even though smartphone cameras have been getting better and better there's still a pretty big gap and smartphone cameras aren't catching up anytime soon. The footage on the red just always came out looking crazy good and cinematic. And while we were shooting this, I almost felt like it was cheating to use this camera because anything that you pointed at just ends up looking great. The amount of dynamic range that you get and how smoothly the highlights transition into the midtones and shadows is pretty insane and really make it stand out from smartphone or even DSLR or in mirrorless cameras. And I feel like especially in the scene with the leaves, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And of course the way that the sun flares and that kind of stuff has more to do with the lens than the camera body itself but you can see just how nicely the red handles the highlight roll off and everything just looks super smooth the iphone does have a surprising amount of dynamic range just because of the computational photography but everything just comes off as looking a little bit harsher and less natural and not only that with the red files you just get a lot more information to play with meaning that once you get to the editing process you can pull down the highlights or bring up the shadows while on the iphone what you see is pretty much what you get because there's there's just not really that much information to pull from. You can also see that in general, the footage from the red just has this nice softness to it that doesn't really retract from the overall sharpness of the image, but really just gives it a nice pleasant look. While on the iPhone, you can definitely tell that there's a lot of post-processing going on. And while the footage does look sharp, it looks a little bit too sharp. So basically what I'm trying to say is that these huge cinema cameras aren't going anywhere anytime soon. The image quality that you can get out of a camera like the red is just incredible. However, that isn't to say that iPhone cameras, or really any smartphone camera for that matter, doesn't have their place. 
After all, you do need the right tool for the right job. The way that we had the red rigged out was far from the largest that you can get it, and it still came in at about 20 pounds. While the iPhone on the other hand comes in at about half a pound and fits in your pocket. And they say that the best camera is the one that you always have with you. So take that how you will. Another huge advantage of the iPhone is just how everything is way more automatic. Like even someone who knows nothing about cameras can probably get a decent image off of an iPhone. While on the red, you need to know about ISO, white balance, shutter speed, shutter angle, and just a bunch of other technical details that are really just too much for the average person to want to care about. And by the way, the red is manual focus only, so you have to get pretty good at pulling focus if you even want this thing to be usable. While on the iPhone, all you have to do is just tap to focus. The iPhone also does have a lot of built-in features that the red just doesn't. For example, stabilization. And you can really see it in this walking shot. And keep in mind that the iPhone is mounted directly to the red, so they're experiencing the exact same amount of shakage. It's just that the optical stabilization on the iPhone combined with the electronic stabilization is doing a lot to smooth out that footage. The iPhone of course also does have three lenses on it which just gives you so much more flexibility. And while you can buy extra lenses to match the focal lengths that the iPhone provides, they are wildly expensive and you're just going to have to lug around even more heavy gear. So I guess what I'm trying to say at the end of the day is that the iPhone is a way more easy to use and convenient camera than the RED. And look, I know no one is realistically going to try to film the next Hollywood blockbuster film on an iPhone, and no one is going to try to fit a red in their pocket. Like I said earlier, these are two different tools for two different jobs, but I just thought that this would be a fun comparison to make. Anyways, that's it for this one. Remember to smash that like button, and if you enjoy content like this, think about subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!